So congratulations, Beatrice. Thank you. Um, tell me a little bit about your caregiving experience. Sure. Um, so my son, uh, 17 years ago, was born with Down syndrome, later diagnosed with autism. Um, so it was, I was a single mom and a bit of a shock. And my mom came and stepped up and said, continue working and I'll help with all the care that's required. Um, now we're 17 years later during the pandemic, um, during an operation that my son needed a lot of care, I had to quit my job um, in order to care for him. And meanwhile, it was pandemic times, mom developed dementia. So it felt like a no brainer, easy transition so that when he got better and I had quit my job, brought him back to health, I asked my parents, um, both in their uh, 80s, to move in with me and to help my dad care for my mother. And that's where I, I find myself now. She's always been a caregiver herself, having had a mother who was bedridden. And um, as an only child, she was the one to do it. And so it, it, I, watching from experience, of course, I would be her caregiver. Well, I understand from being in a comparable situation that it's it's very demanding. And if you've had to quit your job to do the work, it creates real financial pressures, as well as yes, being in this kind of sandwich generation of. And so I wonder what kind of supports have you had that have been effective for you? And then we can talk about what kind of supports that you think. And maybe um, Bianca could also chime in at that point you know, from a policy standpoint, what would be helpful, but what have you found to be um, resources yeah. that have helped you on this path? So having um, others to speak to um, and having people step in to give you kind of respite. Uh, I also bought a pandemic dog, <laughs> so to say, but he's been, he's been a wonderful thing to get me out and we go for long walks, right? Every day we go for walks. And that has been so helpful to kind of refocus myself, um, but also just my siblings who um, come and visit mom, um, provide support, uh, who let me kind of complain sometimes when I have to kind of get it out. Um, and then also just within the disabled community, because like I said, I do have a son who has disabilities, connecting with other parents. Um, I've become a support parent as well during that journey. And I know how important it is to have those support groups in place. So all of those things um, are necessary, just knowing when you're tired and need a break. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that you have those supports in place. I wonder, Bianca, could you add a little bit here about where you see a policy agenda related to caregiving and how we can help support that and move that forward? I think uh, the it's not just what the government can do, it's also what businesses can do. Um, uh, Beatrice had to leave the workforce. She was one of the statistics that was one in three caregivers have to leave their job in order to care for somebody full time. And I think that businesses really have a very important role in providing flexible work options, remote work options, hybrid work options in order to keep um, caregivers in the workforce. There are 53 million Americans in the United States who are providing care. Um, and the, the level of care that's required uh, by this aging demographic is only getting much, much larger, but the, le but the number of caregivers is staying relatively flat. Um, and we're already seeing a huge labor shortage in the market today, um, and that's only gonna get worse. And so we as business owners, we as businesses have to be flexible. We have to adapt to their needs. Uh, because caregivers are great employees, um, they're great people to keep in the community, and it helps them uh, maintain a sense of ownership over finances uh, so that they don't have to, uh, maybe uh, maybe they can't work full time, but perhaps part time is an option. Um, and so that's that's something that I think government should continue advocating for, uh, and businesses can, can really help uh, in terms of providing those options. So the caregiving awards is something that your organization gives out and recognizes people. Is that true? And yes, absolutely. We've been doing this for three years now. And um, tell us a little bit about some of the other folks who may have received this recognition along with Beatrice. We had uh, five different awards, uh, this or six different awards this year. Beatrice won the Overarching Caregiver of the Year Award. 
Um, but we also had others like Gen Z where uh, we nom where we uh, also um, brought to light the Gen Z population. We had Brandon who uh, is 27 years old, but had to quit um, and leave college uh, at 19 years old in order to care for his mom who was diagnosed with dementia. Um, and he's still a full-time caregiver for her. We also uh, gave an award out to uh, the best parent uh, of the of the caregiver of the year award, uh, where we uh, Anna, who uh, cares for her son, who she adopted, um, who had many special needs and required full time care. Um, so there's a lot of faces to caregivers. It's not just those who are caregiving uh, for the elderly. It's also people who have disability. It's 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 people who um, you know had a disability later on in life from a car crash or TBI. Um, and there's all sorts of caregivers from young. Uh, to older uh, that need to be recognized for their hard work. And we're very honored and blessed to be able to uh, give back um, with uh, our partner, Tranquility, uh, which is an incontinence brand that um, many, many people love um, to buy from, from CareWell. Um, Beatrice, can, can you just describe, I, one of the things that I found in my experience is that there is a kind of a veil behind which there are many, many people that are providing caregiving for their families. But mm -hmm. unlike with small children where you're in the park and you're playing with other parents and, you know, you see each other, you don't really know that there are all these people in houses caring for each other. And I wondered, did you find that too? I mean, have you found, you talk to people and uncovers how many people are involved in this level of care for their family members? Yeah, I think especially because um, I've been involved since my son was about two years old in a support group for families with disabilities, particularly Spanish speaking families. Mm. And it's a huge stigma um, among Latinos, um, especially that the mother somehow caused this disability. Um, so I would visit like hospitals uh, where newborns were and kind of reassure them it's nothing you did it's a genetic mutation um, and have to explain that. But a lot of the times it's the mothers um, who are feeling this guilt and not knowing where to get help. Um, so I've been honored and privileged to be able to be a support and sometimes all that means is just tell me what's going on. Um, the next thing that I learned to do was never compare disabilities because um, our saying in our community is once you've met somebody with Down syndrome, you've met somebody with Down syndrome or same thing with autism. And the rise in autistic um, children is, is pretty astounding now. Um, so that's a new thing that I've been delving into, but I've been honored to be able to talk to these families and understand that a lot of times they're blaming themselves. Uh, for what happened to their children. Unlike, you know, with uh, my mother aging, it's almost like everybody goes, oh, they recognize me. Oh, I had, I had to do that for my mother, my grandmother. Well, unfortunately, with children who are born with disabilities, it's a lot of time they carry a lot of guilt and don't even, they feel stuck and not know how to start um, the care. So you have to reassure them that first and foremost, it's a child, you know, congratulations. And now let's let's figure out. Um, it's a different way of seeing the world. It's a different way of thinking. Um, and nobody is unteachable. Even those who are losing cognitive ability, you know, it's uh, as I like to tell my father, okay, we have to readjust. This is no longer working, let's figure it out. And it requires a lot of creativity. And that part can be fun, especially if you like creating things, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, so um, I hope I answered your question, but a lot of that veil is just sometimes just seeking those people and being a support, knowing, hey, you know, I kind of know what you're going through. Well, I want to thank you so much and congratulate you on your recognition. You deserve it. I mean, thank not you. only are you working within your own family, but you're reaching out to others. And that's, you know, the sign of a great community leader. So it's it's marvelous to meet you. I really appreciate oh, it, Beatrice. And, um, and Bianca, congratulations on your work in bringing this issue, which touches so many of us, as you said, to the public. So thanks, both of you. Have a wonderful day. Signing off for Thank season three. Thanks for having us. Thanks.